it's this level confusion that the people like this idea of I am responsible because it's an empowering kind of an idea. Okay. And that's at the mind level, but the mind is responsible at the thought level. Then people will take, a lot of New Age thinking, they'll take things like um, sickness. They take an idea like I am responsible for this sickness. And then they take an idea at the form level for, ah, for this cancer, for this sickness, for this sore throat or whatever. <coughs> There are two different levels, you see. One's that I'm responsible for my thoughts, and the other one is like down here, I'm a, I'm a little person in the body and I'm sick. And then they try to hook these two together. And guilt is, is what happens because people go, oh my gosh, I created this cancer. I feel, oh my gosh, I feel more guilty than ever. Or I attracted this terrible situation, this terrible relationship to me, and I feel guilty. What the Course is, is really, when you really get into it, the way to steer clear of this ego trap is that I am responsible for what I see. In other words, here's the script. Here's what's happening perceptually in, in my life events, which could be anything going on down here. And the Course is saying, you know, what is the purpose that you're going to give to that? What is the lens? Are you going to look through the ego lens or the Holy Spirit's lens at this? Are you going to hold on to the ego's purpose for this? And, or are you going to use the Holy Spirit, which just sees it as another opportunity to, to see it in a miraculous way, to kind of go above the battlefield. The right mind is, is completely up here at a, a mind level. In other words, the Holy Spirit is not down here in the form level. But as soon as the mind perceives itself as down here, or perceives the, issue, the form issues as being the, the main issues, and forgets about the purpose, then there's a level confusion the identity confusion takes place. So I guess to give you some concrete examples of this would be um, the ideas of medicine, um, pills and, and all those kind of things. Basically, you take a, a pill that can bring healing or that operations can bring healing or that there's all kinds of things, even more subtle things like Reiki and, and different energies and everything, the chakras and so on and so forth. As long as they're their body base, you know, mm -hmm. in any way, then, and, and it's, there's a belief that there's healing properties in them, then somehow the mind has forgotten that all, only at the mind level is where, the cre is where creativity is, and that some kind of, of causation has been given to the form level. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, the level confusion comes in, in the mind. That as soon as the mind believes that there's anything causative down here, you know, like, I caught this cancer because I worked in Fernald and it was a high radiation place and my body was exposed to high levels of radiation and therefore I got this cancer. Well, that's saying that Fernald or the environment mm. caused the, the cancer. Yeah, so hopefully you'll get it cured by exposing yourself to more radiation in the form of chemotherapy and, uh, yeah. Mm. You can see where the, the medical model, and not only the medical model, but, but basically we're talking about the whole world, is saying that there are causative things. Not only things that can heal you and make you well, but obviously the things that, that hurt you are, are in the world. Now this has been a, a real a core teaching for me because the more I've, I've gotten into this, and the more I see that everything, I guess like Lesson 136, it says sickness is a decision. And, and it really brings it back to, oh, here, I'm making a decision at the mind level because the mind feels that it's guilty. It feels like it's separated from God. And therefore, it doesn't want to see that the mind is sick, so it projects the sickness on the body and goes, huh, you know, The, the gotcha. mind doesn't want to believe that it's sick, so it leaves the body sick. Yeah, the mind doesn't want to really look at the fact that it's sick because it, it, so it wants to be right. It, does, it wants to be right about what it is, you see. It wants to be right about separating from God and making up a kingdom. So, so this is the trick. Now the key thing, though, is, is to get real clear about these levels, about the mind versus the form level, because, you know, basically there's a great fear of healing. It's back in the back of the book when Jesus talks about, you know, healing and everything, how it's accomplished and everything. He says, before you can heal, you have to really look at the great fear of healing, that you don't really want to be healed. And and that's why a lot of times it seems as if, you know, there's too much fear for a miracle, for a mind shift, that, that is in one sense um, 
earlier in the text, Jesus says, magic is not bad. In other words, Jesus isn't saying that, that magic and pills and operations are evil. But he's saying that well, as long as you're too fearful, you may want a mix of the magic and miracle. You know, you don't want to, if you're having a throbbing headache, and you're sitting there trying to have a change of mind, and it's not working, so to speak, and, and the headache's getting worse, it could be very fearful, you know, to keep trying to do that. So he's kind of saying, take the Tylenol, take the aspirin, reduce your fear level, and that the miracle can't come until it's welcome. In other words, if it's too fearful for your mind for, 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 to invite the Holy Spirit, then you may need a mix of magic and miracle. But you can see that ultimately what we want to talk about is coming to ultimate healing, where you can really just have the, the, the mind shift and stay on purpose and not even have the symptoms. And that comes from not confusing the two levels. So, you know, everything that seems to happen, like I can give you a good concrete example again, because it gets pretty kind of physical here. I, one day I, I came home and I was going to cook some food in my microwave and so I put the food in the microwave and I turned it on for a couple minutes and everything and, and I was doing something else in the kitchen all of a sudden I started feeling real nauseous, you know, was kind of, you talk about the throw up, kind of nauseous feeling in here and just so sick in my stomach and then I started feeling like diarrhea, the, that feeling kind of like back there, you know, coming out real strong and real quick. And, and from being in the course, what, I, what I'm too good at, instead of just looking at the behavioral level, I'm always watching my thoughts mm -hmm. and just noticing what they are. And the thoughts were, you know, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to eat this food. So I just put it in the microwave because I'm so sick. And then I thought, oh gosh, I must be catching the flu. Catching the flu, which I grew up learning that you catch like the germ ball player. from out there <laughs> and, you know, from unclean places and this and that and this and don't wear your sweaters and, you know, temperatures and all. Then the next one was, I wonder if it's going to be a 24-hour bug or a 48-hour bug, you know. <laughs> it's, you see how once you kind of go into ego train of thinking, if you're catching something from outside, then all, a lot of them are thoughts for that. And then my lesson for the day was in my awareness. And it was lesson 136 which is not coincidentally <laughs> sickness, which is not sickness. Sickness is a defense against the truth. So as soon as I had the thought, that thought from the Course, sickness is a defense against the truth, then all of a sudden all these related thoughts, I started remembering thoughts from the lesson, you know, that started to come to mind. That sickness was a decision, that I was just afraid of God's love, and I was, I was, uh, so afraid of love, the love in my mind, of the Holy Spirit, that it was like a quick defense mechanism was to project it down onto the body, project the guilt onto the body, and just, as like a witness to kind of say to God, see, I'm right about myself. I'm, I am teeny and small and vulnerable. I'm not whole and infinite in magnitude, like you say. And, and it's kind of like, it's a pretty strong witness if you're, if you're going to use a little call a witness to the bar stand, so to speak, that's going to speak for, for vulnerability and teeniness. It's really strong. And, and I was able to, to look at that, though, and I, and I started thinking more about the, the thing. And then I was just sitting there on the toilet, and it was kind of like, I said, wait a minute here. I mean, I thought, I mean, I've been studying the Course and going into things, and it was kind of like either what Jesus has been teaching me all along is true, or this is true, you know, that I could catch the flu and this and this. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like I had the experience of going to my mind as I was sitting there and kind of coming to the branching of the road, where I could bring it, trace it back and to see that this is either true or it's not kind of a thing. You know, when you really bring it back down to sickness is an idea. Where did it come from? From God? Did God create sickness? And I kept tracing it back down and I, and I started feeling power started to well up into me and the joy of, of just feeling the spirit, you know, and I just went, I remember going, this is impossible, kind of just very emphatic, you know, kind of like seeing the branching of the road and going, this is impossible, and, and instantly, the, the feeling of nausea, the diarrhea, just like, boom, like in an instant, just left, and I remember thinking, yeah, yeah, and it was a real powerful experience you know, for that thing of, in an instant, you know, people can talk about this and, you know, give theories and this and that, but, but it was one of those experiences of, yeah, yeah, it really gave me that sense of, like, yeah, 
that just seeing clearly the impossibility of the sickness. And also it gave me that sense of, boy, I have to watch my mind because I had that sense of like, here were all these thoughts that were going through my mind that I was believing in and investing in that were teeny thoughts and backwards thoughts, I call them. Something can happen outside of me. So that's kind of a concrete example of like why it's important for us to really watch our mind. You know? What about the guilt that happened? Say that you hadn't, say that you did, it didn't work that way. You're that's talking about the level, yes. and people do get sick. And, and people that bring that up in groups a lot. And that's yeah. where the, in a sense, that's where the level of confusion comes in, in the sense that, that the mind and the form level, the, the form and content that we that's talk about all the time, okay. is still confused. And so what happens is they, they may say the words, you know, please, Holy Spirit, I want to see this differently. But, but there's still that confusion that's in the mind. And really, the, the mind is still invested, still so afraid of God, in, in the mm -hmm. sense that it, that it really wants to be sick. 